I am a huge fan of Cold Steel. I like pretty much all knife companies. I'm not a huge fanboy of any company. Although some people may say I'm contradicting myself because I have called myself a Cold Steel fanboy in the past. Regardless, I would say Cold Steel is my favorite knife company. Uh, I just love their over-the-top wacky designs. I love the way they take inspiration from old swords and knives from like hundreds of years ago. And it's just cool. And then they innovate them to make them ultra strong, overbuilt, oversized, and yet they fit in your pocket. And they're affordable, too. They're not hundreds and hundreds of dollars most of the time. Even with 5-inch, 6-inch blades, it's, it's really cool. Cold Steel is a very impressive knife company. It's been a while since they came out with something I was interested in. I love the Espadas. I love the Voyagers. I love the Rajas. I love pretty much all their designs, all the Spartan, there's, there's just so many cool designs they came out with, but ever since they've been bought a couple years ago, filming this 2021 by the way, I don't remember what the whole story is, they've made a few changes, they've been making some new knives and decisions, and you know, all their knives lately they've been coming out with are still very affordable, and they are very functional, but they're not as fun and exciting. You know, for the most part, they haven't been coming out with these big ol' ridiculous folders that made me fall in love with Cold Steel in the first place. They just kind of seem like whatever functional hunter knives, woodsman knives, and they're cool. They're great knives still, and they're affordable. Again, they're great. It's just that's not what I followed Cold Steel for. That's not why I was a Cold Steel customer. I like the over-the-top, ridiculous designs Cold Steel has, and they're still coming out with a few, but for the most part, I was not very excited for what Cold Steel has been coming out with lately. The Luzin initially was one of those knives. I think this was two years ago when this one came out. It was one of their newer knives. It was like the next big cold steel knife, and I was not terribly impressed with it. I was like, that's kind of cool. I might get one. I might not. I might pull the trigger on it, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't really impress me that much. It wasn't until I just pulled the trigger on it anyway because I found out how cheap it was, and I fell in love with it. Enter the cold steel Luzin large. Oh, <laughs> this knife is sweet. For so many reasons, it's so it it is so functional, uh, it's so smooth, it's so quick, and it's so affordable. I got this for thirty nine bucks, baby, less than forty dollars for this six inch blade right here. Beautiful blade shape. It's a nice. I would call it a clip point. Long handle, big beefy handle, by the way, with stainless steel liners, a backspacer. Look at that pocket clipper there. It's wide. There's a lot to grip onto. We have a lock for the liner lock as well. This knife is just very exciting, mainly because of its affordability, but its functionality on top of how much you're paying is really impressive. It's super long. It's like a little pocket sword. It's a sword. It's a folding sword that fits in your pocket, and it's just so impressive. Fell in love with it the moment I got it out of the box. Again, wasn't impressed by the pictures. Just looked like a slim, you know, whatever knife to me. But when I found out how cheap it was, I was all over it. Let's get the specs out of the way. Weight is 9.3 ounces, so it's heavy. But for a 6-inch knife, that's kind of what you have to expect. We have full steel liners in there, which make it smoother, I believe. You know, having the washers rub against the steel is going to be smoother than washers rubbing against polymer. Just how it is. And we have a 6-inch blade. Again, that's going to add to the weight as well. It's thick, it's chunky, it's beefy, there's a lot to hold on to. It's a long folder. We have the patent pending locking mechanism for the liner lock. I don't think Cold Steel named that yet, but it's very functional, it's very good. The knife is super smooth. We have thumb studs and flippers. Again, this flipper right here doubles as a guard, which is kind of cool. We'll get into that in just a minute. Handle length is 7.5 inches, making the overall length 13.5 inches. 8013 MOV blade steel right there, which is not the most impressive, but that is still a very functional steel. It gets razor sharp. It'll dull on you relatively quickly, but it will also sharpen relatively quickly, so there's no surprises there. It's not the best corrosion resistance, but again, keep it oiled. Don't dunk it in salt water. You'll be fine. Take care of your blade. And the knife would not be at its $69.99 retail price point if it didn't have a cheaper blade steel like that. So keep that in mind as well. They could have got away with making this an AUS 8 or AUS 10 knife, but then then you'd be raising it to like the $90 range. At stores, we'd be paying closer to maybe like $55, $60 bucks for that, which is still totally worth it. I would get this knife for $60, bucks, but it's $40. I got it for $40. $40. That's cheaper than what the XL Voyagers were at the time when those were being made with the AUS 8 blade steel. This is an extremely exciting, impressive folder, and I'm so glad I can include it into the Cold Steel collection of awesomeness. It's just so affordable, and you have a very functional defensive weapon that you can carry inside of your pocket, and it's just so impressive. There's so much to like about this knife. 
Like, I love the pocket sword look. I like how long it is. It carries nicely. We have an FRN. I think they call it Zyx or Zyta. I can't remember what Cold Steel calls their handle material now, but it's glass and plastic mixed together. It's the same stuff the Spyderco's have. It's the same stuff Kershaw uses, CRKT, Benchmade. Every knife company uses this crap. It's glass and plastic mixed together. Cool. You have some texturing on there, although it doesn't do a whole lot. Not that I really care. I like all the cutouts and attention to detail right here. What look like bead blasted stainless steel liners. Those are thick liners, by the way, which help accompany this thick liner lock we have right here. Really cool. It's a really cool looking knife. I, I like the bevels in here, the cutouts. There's just a lot of attention to detail. That's that's something Cold Steel is known for. I like their cutouts. They use in designs they put in the handle. Big old thick backspacer. Love backspacers. I, there's just something about them that look strong to me. It's like a backbone on the knife. Flow through designs are cool too, but I really like the backspacers more. And again, we have matching cutouts right here. It doesn't do anything for traction. There's just not really enough of them, but it doesn't really matter. There is some traction right here. A lot of different positions your hands can fit into. And despite these really small choils in the handle, they actually work pretty well for sinking your fingers in. Believe it or not, you have to get it in hand to really understand how the handle on this knife feels. You can scooch up here. You can scooch up right here for the most control. And despite a, such a small cutout right here, just the way everything's beveled and designed, it actually is pretty comfortable and you really lock your index finger in. You have a big old guard right there, big old guard down here. So you're not easily going to slip upwards if you're doing a thrust cut. Um, but in defensive situations, I always am about reach. So I'd scooch all the way down here. And then we have kind of like a guard or loop around right here. I have a cylindrical cutout for a lanyard hole if you're into that. You definitely have a lot of room to work with right there. That's really cool. Love the blade shape. Long clip blade. It's going to be good for piercing. Excellent for slashing. Overall good utility shape right there. But again, the primary calling of this guy is going to be defense. I'm going to say you have a lot of reach. It flicks out like nothing. You need no wrist movement just because of how smooth it is and how heavy the blade steel is in comparison to the rest of the knife and its length. You just need a little bit of momentum and it just helps swing itself out. It's very impressive. For such a huge knife, you'd think you need some wrist movement. Nope, I don't need very much at all. Same thing with flicking it out. No wrist movement needed. Just keep it still. Watch my arm. It just flicks out because of its design and its weight. Very impressive. Uh, is it waveable off the pocket? Uh, I tried. It's like half waveable. Waveable off the pocket means there's a little thing right here that has some notches on it, and it snags your pocket as you're opening it. Let me try with my sweatpants. Yeah, it's, it's waveable, but you're going to need to practice with it. Um, they didn't put any cutouts on the flipper on this side. This is what you would wave it off of, which doubles as a thumb rest. I don't know if it's meant to be waved out of the pocket. You could, but you'd want to get a Dremel tool and make some cutouts right here. It's really rounded and smooth, which is comfortable, but as far as getting it out of your pocket by waving it, it's not very good. So maybe this was not designed to be waved off the pocket. Cold Steel does have knives they do that are intended to be waved. This one probably wasn't. This is probably just meant to be a guard, or sorry, a thumb rest. Or a guard for your thumb, I should say. And then the flipper doubles as a guard for your index finger. The thumb studs, I also believe, uh, act as a stop pin, or stop pins, I should say. Blood Groove right there. I forget what this thing's actually called. I think that's that's just like a dumb nickname someone came up with, Blood Groove. But either way, just it lightens up the knife. With this steel, no, it doesn't really, but when you're talking huge old fixed blades, you want a very large cutout. It actually lightens up the knife just a little bit. That's what that's for. But more or less, it's just for aesthetics. So, not sure what else there is to say about it. It deploys very well. It carries very well. It is heavy. It's almost 10 ounces, but weight does not bother me when it comes to knives. I just, I don't notice. I wear cargo pants year round pretty much, and cargo shorts even. I don't notice big old heavy knives on me. Some people complain about that. I'm not one of those guys. I, I just, I don't know what it is. I can carry, I've carried 12 ounce knives. I barely even notice they were on me sometimes. I forget I'm carrying knives. I don't know what it is. Flicks out very fast. We have a lot of reach right here. We have a lot to grip onto. They haven't talked too much about how this locking mechanism works, but if you look very closely within the handle, it's literally just a hunk of steel that blocks, just becomes an obtrusion of the liner itself. So it's pretty much impossible for this knife to disengage. I, I don't, unless you manually move that switch down. I don't see how any form of collision on the knife, even when this is, when this is all engaged like this and you have the manual switch in place, I don't see how this could possibly disengage on you. I just don't. I don't see how these 
thumb studs slash stop pins are going to fail on you. I don't see how the blade is going to over travel. There's just no way. I don't see it with a lot of negative force on the spine, which would transfer to the liner, which transfers to this locking mechanism right here, which is manually fit in place by your own thumb. And just becomes, I don't see how this liner is going to snap in half. I just, it's a virtual fixed blade at this point. You have two locking mechanisms on there. And you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Some people don't like secondary locking mechanisms. Well, a lot of people didn't like the auto lock system CRKT used for a while. I don't know if they're still using that. But essentially, it was the same idea. It was a lock for the lock. But there's a spring that would put it in place. And so you would have to manually pull down the secondary locking mechanism and then disengage the main one. And then you could close the blade. A lot of people didn't like that. So CRKT eventually started using the regular locks, the manual lock system, which is a lot like this. It works a little differently, but it's the same concept. It's a babysitter for your locking mechanism. And I just I haven't really done any hard use tests on it or anything, but Cold Steel's using this on a lot of their knives now. It's a new innovation of theirs. I like the cutouts right there. It's very easy to engage and disengage. It doesn't feel cheap or hokey. It's either toggled on or it's off. Unless you really try and use both your thumbs to kind of put it somewhere in the middle. You're not going to be able to do that. You just do one movement, and because of its detent, because of it, the way it's designed, it's either on or it's off every single time. Hey, cool, I'm into it. It's a why not thing. You might as well just engage that after you open up the folder and it's locked in place. Quickly open it up, click, you're ready to go. In a defensive situation when your adrenaline's going, you're probably not going to be able to remember to do that, but you do have the option, and you don't have to use it either. It's just an option. It's a strong enough knife as it is. A lot of lengths to work with here. It's beautiful looking, I think. The blade steel is good. It's the same blade steel that's on the Spider Co. Tenacious, the resilience, the persistence, and the ambitious. That's a very popular knife right there. ACR 13 MOV is a great blade steel for the money. Gets razor, razor sharp. You know what? Let's end the review by cutting up a Bud K magazine. Yes, magazine paper is a very formidable foe against blade steels because it's so thin. But if you have a sharp blade, I'm going to get a good angle here. Oh, crap. I almost poked my wall. Oh, check that out. Razor sharp. There. Amazing. No, it won't last forever, but it also sharpens very quickly. So that's kind of the trade-off when it comes to blade steels. You have a blade steel that'll last forever. Guess what? Once it does dull on you, it's going to take forever to resharpen it. So... Yeah, that's just kind of the trade-off. But the price? $40? $40? dollars $40 for the losing large. The losing small or the medium, they call it. That's a four-inch blade. That's like seven less bucks or so. You can get that for like $34 or $33 or something. You can definitely look into that one. This just looks a little too obtrusive to you. But you like the way it's designed, like the looks. You like the locking mechanism. You like the flipper. You like it's the exact same knife shrunken down with a four-inch blade steel instead of a six-inch blade steel. Ridiculously good knife. This is one of the best knives out there as far as defense goes for the price. For forty bucks, you just cannot beat this thing. It's amazing. I'm so impressed that this thing exists. I'm impressed that they didn't charge eighty bucks for this thing or something. Even then, it wouldn't be a terrible knife. I would want a better blade steel at that point, but for $40, if you want a good weapon on you that you can fit in your pocket, you can't go wrong with this knife. I'm really excited. Functionally, this knife's a 10 out of 10. For 40 bucks. you can't beat this knife. If you want something intimidating that you can use for self-defense, this thing is amazing, outstanding, functional blade. And on top of that, there's all kinds of other forms of cool. It's just cool looking. I like the secondary locking mechanism on there. It's like a little sword that you fit in your pocket. I didn't mention this, but... Uh, I don't mind this style of pocket clip right here. It's not common, but I don't see how this could break on you unless you got two pairs of pliers and tried to crack it in half for some reason. I just don't see how that's going to break. But if you're really serious about defense, you may even want to put a lanyard on there. Not that it really matters. I think there's plenty to grip onto because it's such a thick handle, too. Yeah, they could have lightened it a little bit. if they. Oh, wait a minute. Holy crap, they skeletonized it. So they did skeletonize it. I didn't even notice that. They put in cylinder. Sorry, they put in rectangular cutouts in the thick old liners to lighten up. I was going to say, well, you could make it a little lighter by skeletonizing the liners, but that would raise the price. But no, even with the skeletonized liners, it's still forty dollars. No, Cold Steel didn't pay me to make this video. I genuinely love Cold Steel, and I love this knife. This is a very outstanding knife. Not only is it cool, not as not only is it great in an XL knife collection, not only is it great in a cold steel collection, but it's a great functional knife. Even if this is the only knife you have, you need something for defense. That's really impressive.
Next to the cold steel tie light, six inches. It's about the same length. Tie light's a little more expensive, but it's it's got an AUS eight blade steel, which is a little bit better than the eight series Retino OV. But even though I like the tie light a lot, it's not as useful as this. I like the thicker handle on here. I like the shape of it. It's just more versatile and it's better for slashing. It won't pierce as well, but it'll still pierce very good. Not that you should. I don't, know, I don't think piercing is a great defensive move anyway. It's more about slashes, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Now, what else we got here? We have the cold steel, the old model Voyager XL. Oh, sorry, X2. It's longer than the X2. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I thought this one was like comically huge, and the loose end comes in and goes, nope. Let's do another big one. Let's do one more. How about the Kershaw Strata XL? Also a very long knife. Not quite as long. Close. Which is about like an inch and a half shorter. But I did a review on this one, and although this is more elegant and smooth and slim, and it's as far as defense goes, it's harder to open it up. You know, it's less to hold on to. It's less versatile. The Luzin is extremely, extremely versatile. It's so fun to play with. And you get this extra locking mechanism right here. For 40 bucks. if I haven't said it enough yet, you can't beat this. Really impressed by this blade. Cold Steel Luzin, 6-inch.